Hello, this is Networks Free, and today we're going to talk about a much more modern network, one still used today, which is the STAR network. Now, remember that this is a topology, and the word topology equates to shape. So what we're looking at here is something that's in the shape of a star. Okay, so let's have a look at what I mean by this in more detail. So imagine we've got a group of computers. Uh, so a standard PC, we've got a printer, we've even got a, a, a TV type box, Sky, Virgin, doesn't matter. And in the center here we have our hub switch that may or may not have a router and possibly a wife, which we're not going to look at the Wi-Fi. Now, they're all connected to our hub. So in they come. using Ethernet cables. Now, what this means is, unlike the bus, ring, or token ring network, each device has a single cable connecting it directly to the hub. This has got great advantages and some disadvantages, but this is a standard type of local area network we have. And if you think about it, effectively what we're looking at here is a star formation with one central point and everything else reaching out using these cables. If you look around in the classroom, this is a star. Here's every computer has its own Ethernet cable. So if we quickly look at the advantages and disadvantages of a star network. So the advantages of it, well, they're robust. And you can get potentially fewer data collisions. And I'll talk about that now. So let's go back to our network. Is on a ring or token, remember, a piece of information being sent out from here as it transmits down. It's not just down a small part of the wire. It's actually transmitting along the whole wire pretty much at the same time. And on a ring or bus network, that would mean that it would be on every solitary computer because all the wires is one wire. Here, the data is only going down a single wire. Now, if you can pay for a switch, unlike a hub, that means that that particular data itself will never reach. It won't reach that wire, that wire, or anything else. So you won't get the standard collisions that you had before, where data was reaching out and two computers trying to talk at the same time. In this case, if two computers talk at the same time, particularly if you've got a switch network, you will have no data collisions. And that means it can be much faster. So this is what I mean by an advantage. And I will come back to the difference between a hub and a switch later. So that's an advantage of it. OK. Now, disadvantage. Its cost is this thing does cost more. Is when you look at a classroom environment, you will actually see at some points that you've got some cable trunking. And uh, you know, it's just, it looks like a standard box unit coming off on the wall everywhere. And there's some that's got power supplies on them. You know, you'll see little plug sockets. And you'll see some which just have a little network port. Now, this box is quite large. If you were to look inside it, uh, you would see that at one point, potentially, there could be up to anything, up to 30, 35 cables, all crammed through this plastic unit as it goes off. And uh, that's because each PC, each device, every printer, needs its own cable. So that's expensive to buy. It's also expensive to install, is when you actually think of the installation, you've got to pay an electrician to come in, put all the trunking in, put all the cables in, make sure they're the right size, length, and so on and so forth. That's not cheap. So a star network is far more expensive, but the advantages of the speed significantly outweigh the extra cost and its robustness. So let's look at the robustness. What do we mean by that then? Okay. Well, again, in this case, imagine this cable here snapped. Something bad has gone with it and crack. It's gone. 
Well, it doesn't affect any of these other computers. They all keep on working. Whereas on the older systems, one break and the whole thing goes down. The only thing that can take the whole system down is if the hub or switch stop working. If that central box stops working, then nothing will connect to anything else. So there you go. Is it's much more robust. It's less likely to fail. Okay. So, to recap. Advantages, less likely to fail. If a cable goes down, it keeps going. And you have potentially fewer data collisions, so faster transmissions, and also more computers at the same time. Disadvantage, cost more particularly depending on the hardware you've got. You can buy quality, and that's that. Now, let's look at this hub versus, versus switch. The hub itself is the kind of thing you'd have in your home. So it's good for a home. It's good for your home network because you have few devices. It's also very cheap. Is that's why you effectively, when you sign up to an account, you get given one for free. Uh, very good, very cheap, and it's lovely. Um, if, however, you start putting a few too many devices on, you'll see that your hub will start to fail. It's not designed for a lot. The reason why, this is a thought experiment. If you know Schrodinger's cat, it's a similar kind of thing. It's imagine you have a load of people in a room. So in this room, lots and lots of people are standing. And they're all standing around the outside of the room. And to get to talk to the other person, they have to shout. So, for example, this person here wants to talk to that person there. They want to have a conversation. So they're shouting at each other, the conversation. But this person here wants to talk to that person there, so they are shouting. And they want to talk to that person, so they've been shouting at each other, and so on and so forth. Is everybody is trying to have horrible, loud conversations with each other. And what you end up with is a din, is that person now has no clue what that person is saying because of the noise in the room. That's a bit like a hub. So imagine that instead of people, these had connections going off to your different devices. Is what's going to happen is when the devices all talk, they all share this one area, and what's broadcast to one cable ends up being broadcast to all the cables, and you get data collisions again. So we really we don't want that. What would be far better to have, we're going to have somebody that sits there and controls who talks to who. So there's a little bit of logic there, and there's somebody sitting at the top who actually can control it. Again, I'll do slightly fewer this time. So we have a few people there and a few people there, and we have our cables connecting them all off to our different devices in the outside world. And we're going to control this, call this person, say, uh, switch. Is, should we say, J switch. Yep. So their job now is this connection here says, hello, I want to talk to that person there. J switch goes, well, you know what, that's fair enough. I'll actually set you up and switch you directly through. Next connection comes along and they say, I want to talk over there. So no problem. Here's your own unique connection and so on and so forth. Now what we have is everybody is happy because they're all having their private conversations. They've all effectively got little phone lines to talk to each other. And that's how a switch box works. So you have no collisions. The problem is that this is more expensive to build. Uh, it's very good if you have larger networks or mid-sized networks because their collisions would be a problem, but because of its expense, you wouldn't normally bother paying for this on a home network. So, with star-type networks, 
A hub is good for a small network because it's cheap. A switch is good for medium to large networks, but it can be much more expensive. Okay. Right, that's hub and switch. Now, the next part. Say I have two buildings. Here's one building has a little network all the way over here, and another building has a slightly larger network there. And I want to connect the networks and make them all one. How am I going to do this? Well, I could say, well, okay, let's just take a wire and connect that wire over to that computer. And I'm going to connect that one over to that computer. I think, fantastic. Now they're all on one switch box, no problems. But that's going to be really expensive. And one other problem with traditional wire is it's got a 100 meter limit on copper wire. So we don't want that. So we can say no to that. How about this then? Instead of putting lots of wires across, we can, in fact, link boxes. So I'm going to take one single wire and link it through. Now, the two boxes can communicate to each other quite readily. So all of these computers can communicate to each other. And in some circumstances, if that's indoors, that's absolutely fine. Let's just say they're within 100 meters. But then we have a problem. We get a storm happening. Out comes the old lightning. Before you know it, bzz, our wire gets hit by electricity and fries every solitary computer on the block. And we go, uh-oh, that's a problem. So connecting boxes between buildings in our local area network isn't ideal if we're using standard network cable. So we try not to. Is instead of that, what we do is we go fiber optic. Now, fiber optic has great advantages and disadvantages. Modern switches tend to have at least one fiber optic port connecting them. So you can link a switch to a switch. Fiber optic links don't have a 100 meter limit. You can literally stretch oceans with them. And the really great thing is because it's glass, they're not susceptible to interference from electricity. They have some disadvantages. Over long distances, they're much cheaper, but those connections cost a bit, and they can be quite fragile. But the advantage of it is they are faster, much, much faster, and you can store many, many more computers, can all go down that cable at the same time, which is a huge advantage, and uh, they don't suffer from outside electrical interference. When we're looking at the many cables, even if you've got two switch boxes, you can have a problem if you link them up, is you can get collisions if they're sharing, or at least a lag, if they're all sharing a single cable between them, is all of these computers, if this has, say, an internet connection over there, they would all need to go through that one link to get to the internet. So you can start slowing down what would have been a fast network by using a slow link between the boxes. So that's another reason to use fiber optic. And because it has no effective maximum length, you can in fact use lots of fiber optic cables to connect straight to your main server. So when you're linking between buildings, it's better to actually use a fiber optic. And for speed, if you can afford to, or if there's the capability, your box is even inside, you would like to use fiber optic its disadvantage is physically it's quite fragile, even if it is better at uh, resisting electrical storms. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. Star networks, so-called because they form the shape of a star with a central area fanning out. This is nowadays the most common topology used in local area networks, the local networks we have. It is by far and away the most robust. It's less likely to fail, but it is much more expensive than the older ones. But it does come, usually, with fewer collisions. If you want to link boxes, you can do that. But when linking, you have to think about the distance between boxes, because there's a 100 meter limit on copper cable, which is standard network cable. And if it goes over that, then you want to use fiber optic, 
which is A, much faster, and B, resistant to electrical interference, but is more fragile. Okay, there should be a test for you to do after this.